Hello everyone, my name is John Bussard. I'm an HPE Business Transformation Center Engineer for Ingram Micro. I help support HPE servers, blade systems, storage, as well as Aruba networking technology solutions. In my videos, what I like to do is show you a slide from a popular PowerPoint and then demonstrate to you what that means within a management context. Today, we're going to continue on our discussion with HPE's Aruba Central. So Aruba Central today rolls up within the GreenLake platform. Um, Aruba Central did exist as its own entity, but as HPE moves to this more of a, a cloud practice within an environment, um, it made sense for Aruba Central to roll up underneath that. So Aruba Central can certainly manage on-prem wired as well as wireless equipment. Um, today, though, we're going to focus in on the management and configuration of wireless networks within our environment. So with all that being said, let's explore this management context. Okay, here we are up underneath the GreenLake platform. So when you think of HPE GreenLake, um, think of the cloud. And if we think of the cloud as being um, an experience and not necessarily a destination, um, HPE brings this experience to on-prem hardware. And certainly that can be the cost model or pay for what you utilize on a monthly basis. And if you choose that solution, you'll see the costing as well as the, the capacity planning found within GreenLake Central. But, but the, the cost or the CapEx um, attack is one aspect of managing with a cloud-like perspective. There's also the day-to-day -day maintenance and, and that we'll find within these tiles over here. So things like compute ops management allows us to manage on-prem client servers the Data Services Cloud Console allows us to manage on-prem HP storage solutions, so like the Electra solutions. And then today what we're going to look at is Aruba Central. So let me launch that. All right, here we are underneath Aruba Central, and we're looking at a global aspect of our environment. Now for configurations, um, what we want to look at is groups over here. And I have a few groups already created. But what I think I'm going to do now is create a new group, and I can do that by clicking on this gear icon. And if you notice down here, I've actually selected the organization. So I I could have gone over here and selected organization. It would have brought me into this context, and I could have dug into groups. So that was just a shortcut way of, of doing that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new group in this environment. And we'll call this, I don't know, demo and I could choose what types of things I want to manage underneath this group. Today we're just going to do access points. I'm going to select that. Certainly there is a way of creating templates and variables and applying those in, into solutions, but we're not going to use those today. Um, I'm going to select next. And now I get to choose if I want an Aruba OS 8 architecture or Aruba OS 10. We're going to select that. And we're also going to use Campus Branch. It would be a traditional type of environment. Uh, Micro Branch would be a part of an SD-WAN type of deployment. So this would connect up to an Aruba Gateway. So we'll leave it like that. Now I'm going to click Add. And now we can see our group's been added. We could also see that group over here. Right. But currently, it doesn't have anything in it. All right. These numbers here indicate how many devices are in there. Now, when you bring up a new device, it'll end up under unprovisioned devices or under default devices. Um, what I'm going to do in this case is we're going to grab another access point for another one of these groups. So if I expand maybe out this group here, there's this access point. If I scroll down a little bit, you can see that I can move this access point to our new group. And now we can see how we have a number one indicating there's one device in there. So let's go over here and let's select our demo video and we'll go down to devices and we can see this one access point exists. Right, I'm going to go into a config context. And it's going to ask me for a password. This will be used if I log in through the CLI and maybe run a show command or something like that. Right, we don't see any wireless networks again because this is a new group. So I'm going to add an SSID and we'll call this Aruba Central Demo. I'll click Next. I get some aspects that I could use within an SD-WAN environment. I'm going to leave it bridge. If I leave it on the native VLAN, um, it will use the same IP scheme as the access points if it's getting a DHCP address. I actually want to use a static one. Now as we go through this demo, 
the third octet of my IP address will relate to what VLAN it's on. That just happens to be how I manage it. I'm going to take these guys. I'm going to throw them on VLAN 82. Next. Now i got to select my security within my environment. All right, certainly I could do an open network. All right, so people could just connect to this as they wish. It does support enhanced open. Um, we could do a visitor network as well. I think we'll do this in a little bit. Um, certainly a personal network is where I just need a passphrase in order to be able to log in the environment. And for the utmost in security, we certainly do have enterprise configurations. And I could do things like add a radius server into this. So somebody could log in with maybe username or passwords. Or we could do pretty elaborate things with this, um, especially if we integrate something like a ClearPass server. So HP's ClearPass solution. Again, you could do many great things with that. One thing I do want to note underneath the primary service, we have this cloud auth. I'm going to come back to that a little bit later, and we'll discuss that um, you know, a little bit later on in this video. So, so we're just going to create a network real quick. We'll do the personal network. Oops, my passwords don't match. Let's try it again. And click Next. And then here we can uh, choose if we want to apply an access rule into this environment. I'm going to leave this as unrestricted. We'll come back and ticker with this. This is like adding a firewall rule to your SSID if you wanted to use that. I'm going to click Next again. All right, here's my summary page. I'm going to click Finish. Now we only have one access point within this group, but if I had multiple access points, this SSID would be pushed out to all of them. And those could be at one location, or they could, these could be branches all across the globe. Again, this is a configuration context. If I wanted to kind of separate these out based on site, I certainly could set up sites over here as well. All right, so we have this one SSID created over here. So let's connect into that environment. Connect, put in our passphrase, click next again. And you'll see that we are connected. And just for a matter of good measure, uh, we connect to a few websites. So maybe we'll do ABC News. Maybe better look at some other websites as well, some other news outlets as well. We could also maybe look at fast.com, see what our bandwidth looks like. And since everybody loves their furry friends, why don't we look at PetSmart as well? All right, so certainly this network works or this wireless SSID works within the environment. So let's go back through and let's tinker with this SSID and look at some of the firewall rules that we have available to us. Okay, so I'm going to select this and we're going to edit it. All right, we can see our network, our VLAN that we're associated with, the security we're using, and here's the access. So we could do role-based. Um, that could certainly be passed down by a ClearPass server. I'll show you how we can use that within this context um, in a little bit. Um, I'll select network base right now, and right now it's set to allow to all destinations, and certainly we could see we could get anywhere we wanted to. Um, but I'm going to go down and add different roles, and certainly we've got a great amount of capacity of what we can do within this environment. All right, we could even limit down to DNS, IP, address, access points. Um, in our case, why don't we do this? And we'll go down to web category. Certainly there's a lot of things that I would like to limit here. But why don't we do something a little bit simpler? And we'll just do news and media. And I'll select deny. Click OK. So this is like an access control list. It starts from the top to bottom. If it hits something, it'll enact it. Why don't we add another one just for good measure? And why don't we do um, application? And we'll do maybe YouTube. But this time, maybe I want to allow people to get there, but I want to application throttle them. So and I'll click OK. So certainly we can create these type of rules. 
for SSID within our environment. I'm going to click Save Settings. Click OK. And we can see our SSID up here. So let's go connect to that again. I'm going to click Disconnect. And I'll connect again. Real quick, we'll open up a command line. So I set this for VLAN um, 82. Again, I said that was our third octet. So we take a look over here. And we can see that our wireless adapter certainly is connected to that VLAN. Are our firewall rules enacted? So let's take a look. Let's go to ABC News. You can see that we're cycling on through. Let's try another outlet. You can see we're cycling through as well. Uh, let's open up another tab and let's try our bandwidth. So we'll go to fast.com. Right, see what we're getting here. And how about PetSmart? Does that open up? So that's certainly opening up as well. But again, as we can tell, we've been blocked on our news outlets. So that's kind of a handy feature that we could utilize as a part of our network environment. Having more tools is better than having less tools. All right, so let's, let's log out of this environment. And let's create a guest network. All right, so we'll call this Aruba Central Guest. We'll click Next. Probably want to put them on another VLAN, more protected VLAN. So I'm going to use that. Click Next again. I'm going to select Visitor. And now I could select an external captive portal. So certainly, again, I could use something like ClearPass to provide that. There's a lot of external captive portal providers that are out there these days. Um, what I'm going to use is Cloud Guest, and this is something that's built into this environment. And we're going to utilize this as a part of it. I'm going to show you my splash page in a little bit, but we're going to select that. I'm going to click Next again. Now here's our access rules. Um, I could do network based again, or why don't you just reuse what I've already created, you know, in this Aruba Central demo. All right, so this is those same access rules that I've had. Right, and I can click Next. Here's our summary page. We'll click Finish. Now let's talk about the splash page that I assigned to that. Um, we will find that splash page underneath Guests over here. So let's select that. And we can see these splash pages. And I could add a new one if I wanted to and assign it to that SSID if I needed to. Right, but let's take a look what I've already created. Right, so you can get pretty complex in these splash pages. So I'm going to click this and then click Edit. Right, so we can see the name that we've set up for it. We've set it for anonymous, but certainly we could do authenticated or Facebook Wi Fi. Um, you know, guest key if we want to enable that. Um, I've got a redirect URL. So once they log in, they'll have to go to um, ingrammicro.com or get, they'll get redirected to ingrammicro.com. Um, their session lasts for eight hours, right? but there's a variety of things. I even got an allow list URL, so even if they don't authenticate, I can still bring them to some, some different types of websites or allow them to go to some different types of websites. So this would be like maybe like an airport where you've got, you know, you can't get on their guest Wi-Fi unless you pay, but maybe you can always get to arrivals and departures. But there's a variety of other things that we can configure inside this environment. Right, there's ad settings localization settings. So quite a few things that we could we can configure within this environment. Right. And again, this splash page that we're looking at is what I assigned to this wireless network right here. So let's log into that real quick. Let's go find this network. There it is. I'll click connect. And we can see our splash page has popped up. And if I open up a command line, I'm 
we can see my third octet is that new VLAN, that more secure VLAN in our environment. All right, so that is a handy way of being able to create a, a guest network. I'm going to go back and connect to our other network again, so this is Aruba Central demo. I have one other thing I'd like to show you. Now, when I created an SSID, right, I'll just give this some type of name. We'll leave it at this native VLAN, but I could set up an enterprise network, and I could have selected cloud off. So a lot of people buy ClearPass so they can authenticate against an active directory. Um, within their environment. There's a lot of other things. It's a very powerful tool. There's a lot of other things you can do to kind of massage traffic on your network. But a lot of time people look at purchasing that for, for those reasons. Um, CloudAuth allows us to be able to do that if we're authenticating against Azure Active Directory. Now I have to set that up. So I'm going to click cancel here. And if I go to global and I go down to security, then authentication and policy, right, we can see there was a, res a request that has happened, but what I want to do is go back to this config context. Right? And I could expand this out. You can see that I have um, set this up within my environment. Now I'd show you a video on this, but when you go to set this up, they have links to some great videos. They're very, very straightforward. In order to be able to set this up, you got to capture some information from within Active Directory and bring this on over. But once you do that, now you will need an onboarding URL. So I'm going to copy that URL real quick. Now I have this assigned to an SSID in this group. So again, if I go down to Devices and then over to Config, you will see I have this Aruba Central auth. I'm going to click edit on that and we'll quickly go over to security you see I have that cloud off selected for this so why don't we connect to this network and see what this experience is like so first we have to onboard this user so this user you'd have to send them that link in one way shape or form they'll open up their browser and they'll click on this link or or paste this in It'll bring up this context to help them onboard. And certainly you can install Aruba on board if you wanted to. I'm going to click no thanks. I'm going to sign in for provisioning. I'm going to select my account. I'm going to put in my password. I'm going to sign in. I'm not going to stay signed in. Right, I'm going to install on Windows. We see a a pass point package has come down. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to let that go through. Obviously, we get a warning on that. All right. But once we're done, we should be able to log into this network through a certificate. So let's let's talk a little bit about that. So I'm going to disconnect from this network. So I'm going to connect to this cloud off. Right. And it's going to ask for a username or password, but I'm going to connect using a certificate. And that's what was applied as a part of this process. I'm going to click Connect. And then we're connected. And then once again, I could get access to the Internet right. through a safe and secure fashion through my Azure Active Directory account. So I hope you found this video informative. And please stay tuned for more videos.